Hello and welcome back. This is video number eight and we're going to talk about creating a custom audience. Now it's really not hard. I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do and we'll give you some recommended criteria to get started. So like I said, most of you are going to use the website traffic custom audience. So I went ahead and just clicked on that one and you're going to see this here. Now, Facebook might change the user interface, but the majority of time it's pretty much the same. So it says include people who meet any of the following criteria. Now you can change the any to all if you want. So we could say anybody who visits the initial page, any page, or let's say for example, the blog posts. If somebody visits the blog post, or another blog post, let's say we have three different blog posts, then we can say anybody who visits any of these three blog posts, let's retarget them. Let's put them in a custom audience. So if it's any, you could say all website visitors in the last 30 days. So it's all website visitors or people who visited a specific web page or they spend a, a certain amount of time on your website. And this is really good to have just in case somebody visits really quickly and then leaves. You're most likely not gonna wanna create a custom audience to somebody who comes to your website and within five seconds leaves. You would rather create a custom audience of people who perhaps came, spent about 10 minutes or more, and then you could create a custom audience on that because that usually means that they are interested in what you have to offer. So you could do that. You could do, you know, specific events like page view, general event, view content or purchase. Now, if it's a specific web page, then you're going to want to enter the full URL. Or what you could do is you could say anybody who visits a specific web page that has the keyword blog in it or paint, something like a keyword. Now, what I would recommend is to enter the full URL right here. So you could have one here, you could include more like so. So you could click that and include more and more and more. Or you could say something like include people who meet all. So they have to have visited blog post one, two, and three in order to be considered part of that custom audience. Now, what we found over the years is the more specific, the better. If you can get a custom audience for a very specific page, then when you create a retargeting ad, you will be able to talk to them very specifically. It becomes a problem when you become too general and the Facebook ad is too general and it doesn't really meet the specific needs of that visitor, if that makes sense. Now, another question that you might have is, well, out of the 30 days, do I want to do 30 days? Meaning anyone who visit the specific page in the past 30 days is going to be inside of this custom audience. Now, the maximum time is 180 days, so you could do 180 days. But I am going to warn you because the majority of people who come to your page are not going to remember you past seven days. So keeping that in mind, you may want to stick with 30 days or less. And if it's sometimes, if you think about if you go to a web page, a lot of times you're not even going to remember it even 30 days down the road, unless it's a, a review page for a product that they are interested in or a product that they might be going to buy. So it really depends on the specific page that they have visited. Maybe they clicked add to cart, but they did not purchase. If that's the case, they're most likely going to remember it. But past 30 days, that becomes an issue. And if that becomes an issue, your conversions are not going to be there and they might click spam, which can actually hurt your Facebook ad. So bear that in mind whenever you're creating these custom audiences. Now you can also exclude. 
So you can say anyone who visits these pages, but I don't want to include maybe the third blog post. So I want to say anyone who visits the first two blog posts, but we're going to exclude the third one. You click exclude and you simply do the same thing and you enter the web pages there. So when you're done and you're ready, simply click on audience name, enter the name of the audience. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you name the audience, name it something that you are going to remember and use a naming convention that you are going to remember. A lot of times it's easy to just name it anything that you want, but as you begin to build more custom audiences, you're gonna forget. That's reality and that's it. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven. Let's talk about custom audiences. Now, when I showed you the visual mind map of how everything works and the different scenarios, we talked about custom audiences being a ad targeting option that lets you find people who either took an action or either didn't take the action that you wanted. So as you can see here, according to facebook.com, a custom audience is an ad targeting option that lets you find people who already know your business on Facebook. So with that said, to get here, all you have to do is up the top, click this, and then click audiences. And then you'll see a drop down menu that says create custom audience, and you wanna click that. Now you will see an option on creating a lookalike audience, but that's not what we're gonna do. You don't really want to create a lookalike audience until you have run enough Facebook ads and you've collected a certain amount of data to know that the lookalike audience is correct. So what is a lookalike audience? A lookalike audience, according to Facebook, is let's say we run a thousand people to an opt-in page. And out of a thousand people, we have about a hundred people who opt in. Now out of the 100 people that opt in, we want to figure and reach similar people based on the 100 people that converted. So what you can do is you can create a lookalike audience with Facebook. And what Facebook will do is it'll go out into the database and find people that are very similar to the people that have opted in. Now that is super powerful. No other platform can do that. So what you're really doing is you're tapping into Facebook's database according to the data that you have found and comparing and finding people that are similar. You could do that with a purchase. Maybe you have a thousand people that visited a sales page and out of those people, those we have eventually a hundred people that buy. So we wanna find a hundred people that are similar. So that's what a lookalike audience is. Now, what we wanna do in this specific retargeting campaign is to create a custom audience. So, these are the different custom audiences that you can create. Now, I'm not gonna talk about how to create one just yet. We'll talk more about that in the next video. But as you can see here, as far as custom audiences go, you can find, let's say for example, an email list of your customers or your subscribers and upload them here and then you can retarget them. So maybe somebody opted in for a freebie. You could upload that here and you can retarget them and try to get them to purchase a product that might be similar to what they signed up for. So even though they fulfilled the action of signing up and giving you their email address, you can still retarget them. They're still potential buyers. Website traffic, you can create a custom audience based upon people who visit your website. So we could say anybody who visits our opt-in page or anybody who visits our blog posts, we wanna retarget them. It doesn't have to be that, it can be people who opted in and who saw the next page or maybe they clicked a button and they saw a next page. It doesn't matter what page it is, you can do any page that you want. As long as the Facebook pixel is on it, you can track it, you can create a custom audience. Now, app activity is something that most of you will likely not use. You can create a list of people who launched your app or your game or took a specific action. Offline activity, 
you can create a list of people who interacted with your business, your in-store business by phone, by offline channels, and all that. For engagement, you can create a list of people who engage with your content on Facebook or Instagram. Now, most of you are going to use the customer file or the website traffic. Very, very few people actually use the app activity or the offline activity unless you have a local business. So one of these two, most likely you're going to start out like this if you don't have a list. So you'll start here. So now that you understand the different types of custom audiences that you can create without overwhelming you, let's move on to the next video and we'll talk about how to create the custom audiences correctly.